Morning folks, it is Friday morning and it's the first day whenever you're allowed back out again after our lockdown so I hope you stay safe today whenever you're doing but we're going to start the day off by coming together and reading God's word. So for the last in our current series we're going to read from the book of Jude or the letter of Jude. Just a single chapter in our Bibles. Let's read this letter together. This letter is from Jude a slave of Jesus Christ and a brother of James. I am writing to all who have been called by God the Father, who loves you and keeps you safe in the care of Jesus Christ. May God give you more and more mercy, peace and love. Dear friends, I have been eagerly planning to write to you about the salvation we all share. But now I find that I must write about something else, urging you to defend the faith that God has entrusted once for all time to his holy people. I say this because some ungodly people have wormed their way into your churches, saying that God's marvellous grace allows us to live immoral lives. The condemnation of such people was recorded long ago, for they have denied our only Master and Lord, Jesus Christ. So I want to remind you, though you already know these things, that Jesus first rescued the nation of Israel from Egypt, but later he destroyed those who did not remain faithful. And I remind you of the angels who did not stay within the limits of authority God gave them, but left the place where they belonged. God has kept them securely chained in prisons of darkness, awaiting for the great day of judgment. And don't forget Sodom and Gomorrah and their neighbouring towns, which were filled with immorality and every kind of sexual perversion. Those cities were destroyed by fire and serve as a warning for the eternal fire of God's judgment. In the same way, these people who claim authority from their dreams live immoral lives, defy authority and scoff at supernatural beings. But even Michael, one of the mightiest of the angels, did not dare accuse the devil of blasphemy, but simply say, the Lord rebuke you. This took place when Michael was arguing with the devil about Moses' body. But these people scoff at things they do not understand. Like unthinking animals, they do whatever their instincts tell them. And so they bring about their own destruction. What sorrow awaits them? For they follow in the footsteps of Cain, who killed his brother. Like Balaam, they deceive people for money. And like Korah, they perish in their rebellion. When these people eat with you in their fellowship in your fellowship meals, commemorating the Lord's love, they are like dangerous reefs that can shipwreck you. They are like shameless shepherds who care only for themselves. They are like clouds blowing over the land without giving any rain. They are like trees in autumn that are doubly dead, for they bear no fruit and have been pulled up by the roots. They are like wild waves of the sea churning up the foam of their shameful deeds. They are like wandering stars, doomed forever to darkest blackness. Enoch, who lived in the seventh generation after Adam, prophesied about these people. He said, listen, the Lord is coming with countless thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment on all the people of the world. He will convict every person of their ungodly things that they have done and for all the insults that ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These people are grumblers and complainers, living only to satisfy their desires. They brag loudly about themselves, and they flatter others to get what they want. But you, my dear friends, must remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ predicted. They told you that in the last times there would be scoffers, whose purpose in life is to satisfy their ungodly desires. These people are the ones who are creating divisions among you. They follow their natural instincts because they do not have God's spirit in them. But you, dear friends, must build up each other in your most holy faith. Pray in the power of the Holy Spirit and await the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will bring you eternal life. In this way, you will keep yourself safe in God's love. And you must show mercy too to those whose faith is wavering. Rescue others by snatching them from the flames of judgment. Show mercy to others still, but do so with great caution, hating the sin that contaminates their lives. 
Now all glory to God who is able to keep you from falling away and will bring you with great joy into his glorious presence without a single fault. All glory to him who is alone God, our Saviour, through Jesus Christ our Lord. All glory, majesty, power and authority are his before all time and in the present time and beyond all time. Amen. Amen. That's the letter of Jude. It's, a, it's just a single chapter in our Bible, but it's packed full again of different bits of wisdom which are so relevant to us in this day. About staying firm and staying true. About not letting people corrupt God's word. Um, it talks about people who you know have their own dreams and, and share what they say is their own insight. Again, it's, it's about staying away from those who say more than what's in the Bible. Um, those who make up their own ways of doing things, their own rules as such, their own path of faith. We're told to, to hold firm to what God teaches us in his word. It's interesting how it says that they are um, dangerous because they are foolish. And they don't really fully appreciate the power of evil, the power of Satan and the fallen angels um, and how they could be deceived by that but how we must hold on. But look at those verses 22 and 23. You must show mercy to those whose faith is wavering. In other words, help them, be with them uh, at all times. Rescue others by snatching them from the flames of judgment. Reaching out to those amongst us who are not as strong as others. But it's not what being a Christian is all about. It's not what helping each other day by day is all about. You know, if, we, if we're, we're taught to make disciples, that's teaching others. But in doing so, it's teaching them God's word. Not, not what we would want it to be, but what it actually tells us. That's a, a thought for today, a thought for the weekend. Uh, just as we um, head towards getting back into church on Sunday, about staying true to God's word. So folks, just remember, yeah, we're back in church this Sunday again. That lockdown has been lifted. You're able to get back out to the shops again today and do different things. But please remember to stay safe still. Remember to look after one another. And as you come to church, please remember as you're coming and going as well, keep your face mask on if you can wear one. Keep your two metres distance. That's just... In physical terms, look out for one another, just as we're called spiritually to look out for one another. Let's take the complete the approach of the complete body and look out for one another in the, the human way, but then more importantly, to look out for one another as well in the spiritual way. So let's pause and let's pray together. Father, thank you again for your word this day. May it speak into our hearts and into our lives. May it um, show us the things that we need to do and show us the things that we need to stop doing uh, as we strive to, to grow closer to you day by day. And Lord, as we do so, help us to reach out to others. Help us to look out to those who are young in faith or weak in faith, who need a helping hand and help us to be able to encourage them. But Lord, help us to do it in the right way and not the wrong way. So Lord, thank you. Continue with us now this day we pray. Amen. Folks, thanks for joining with me again for these two weeks of lockdown. Um, if lockdown comes again, say in the new year, we'll go back to doing our daily Bible readings. Uh, but in the meantime, I really do pray that you take care and may God bless you. Chat to you soon. Bye.